happy to kick off our first uh, seminar of the semester with uh, Hong Lu, who will be telling us about higher derivative of gravity with non minimally coupled P points. Well, thank you very much. And uh, first, I would like to thank Chris for a kind of invitation and, uh, so that I come more or less here every year, once a year. Uh, well, the talk uh, is high derivative gravity but uh, with additional matter, and, uh, and uh, we could consider P forms that's kind of inspired by string theory. That's a typical, as I imagined, uh, the string. And the talk is based on uh, works, basically uh, the first two work uh, with my students. Uh, one is a PhD student, and uh, we try very hard to get to the paper on the first day of the new year, we try to get in the, 16, the, you know, the early numbers of uh, 2016, but we managed to pass uh, more or less the last You're number. beaten by 9,000 feet. <laughs> 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 uh, we got one day long, basically. I think the, the archive give a long instruction. instruction. Yeah. And uh, the, this work start with uh, uh, some work with uh, Chris and Haishan about convexity gravity, and we study the thermodynamics there and find the unusual properties. Then we feel ah, the convexity gravity is just a, a special case of a more general class of theory we can construct, uh, where convexity gravity can be viewed high degree gravity in the number of couple of one form, few strings whose uh, potential is like an X so that's basically the main idea. So the talk outline of talk uh, first give a motivation, then uh, uh, present a theory <coughs> of a general theory involving a P form. Then we look at the special cases. When P equal to one fit, then this gives rise to home X and Y. And then, then we also look at what happens to P equal to 2, corresponding to Maxwell theory. And uh, one can also not just, just consider few strings, but also like potential or the P form potential. And uh, this, in this case, of course, the asymmetry is broken, and let's see what happens, uh, the implication of this. So uh, the motivation is uh, about trying to generalize Einstein gravity. And the basic assumption in Einstein's formulation of gravity, uh, I think is roughly those uh, points. But you always assume general coordinates, covariance or invariance. And uh, then you also assume, at least Einstein formulation of gravity, assume the metric of the fundamental field, describing the space time geometry. Then you, Einstein assumed the theory had only two derivatives also assume matter couples uh, gravity minimally. Minimally implies couples to the metric instead of the derivative of the metric. So consequently, we'll get uh, Einstein's equation, g mu uh, t mu uh, where the t mu is the matter and its momentum tensor. So a natural generalization is just consider why you strip oneself the uh, two derivative, you can consider high derivative. <coughs> And high degree of gravity was considered early on in the 70s by a bunch of people, and Ken uh, Stell made uh, some important work. Basically, find that, uh, well, we know that uh, Einstein gravity is not renormalized, but uh, this problem, renormalizability problem, can be solved by introducing high derivative, in which case the propagator is uh, one of the people force power instead of uh, one of the p squared. But unfortunately, the theory involving high derivative always contains uh, inevitable ghosts. And uh, one way to avoid ghosts is considered uh, like gauss Bonnet or Lovelock terms, where the total derivative. But this, uh, in four dimension, you cannot do that because this theory, uh, uh, in four dimension, gauss Bonnet or Lovelock terms are all total derivatives. 
So in some sense, low log gravity or low exponent gravity only makes sense in the context of string theory. So string theory predicts that two derivative single gravity are their low energy effective series and high order alpha prime or string loop fraction involve high derivative in the metric. So one example is the n equal to one t equal to ten single gravity contains the one squared term. And such term, of course, uh, uh, makes sense only perturbatively, since when treat uh, this term on its own, then the theory will have an inevitable ghost, just like uh, four dimension cases. While many aspects of super gravities can be discussed uh, with a small alpha prime, an attribute application requires a, uh, you want this term to be then, uh, not small. If uh, everything remains to be small, then you don't really change enter the topology of space time. Then space time really, uh, you can have this term can have a small perturbation to intensity space time, but uh, the perturbation is really like uh, a small wave on the uh, on flat space. It's, it's not very interesting. Uh, also, in ADSCFT case, you want to have this term to be big because otherwise it's just a, a tiny infinitesimal correction to what you get. So, in string theory, one can perform the peak change of field redefinition where g mu mu goes to g mu mu plus r mu mu and also r g mu. And then if you do that with an appropriate C1 and C2 coefficient, then the Riemann square term becomes a Gauss-Bernet term. Of course, you would have far more terms in high orders. And uh, the equation motion of a Gauss-Bernet term, then, as I mentioned, that I make second order, hence Gauss free. So then when uh, this case, our clients to be uh, uh, regarded small. But the next step is just typically hand waving argument that uh, in, appears to uh, enormous size of the landscape of string factor. Then you just assume there are cases where the gauss plankton dominates and the low energy effective theory can treat on its own. But that's typically what one does. Uh, in fact, then uh, in this picture, the rich scalar gauss planck term are both Euler integrands, and the former is a two derivative, while the latter is a four derivative. So, th there are, in fact, there are an infinite series of such Euler integrands giving rise to the general number. Meaning what? What's an Euler integrand? Uh, give rise to. Uh, Oh, what's all the integral? Definition. I will give it in a moment. Uh, yes, right. But I, I'm not sure how to define it, but I give you the, the mathematical formula for the all the The low log case is for derivative generically in any dimension? No, in uh, arbitrarily high order oil integrals. Mm -hmm. uh, number of derivatives? Number of derivative were the, like a uh, four. Five dimension, five to uh, six dimension, for example, you can up to five, uh, four derivatives. And then later, because the six derivative yeah. will be a total derivative. And then it goes up. Yes, right. Go right. Right. But Gauss one is always two. Uh, of course. So, yes. Sorry, all of this at the equation motion, they are all two derivatives. The total derivative, uh, uh, kind of due to the nonlinear you add up, is uh, can you have derivative. But each field can only have two derivatives. So effectively, it's a, at a linearized equation, there are all two derivatives. I see. Okay. So now let's consider we want to generalize the case to include matter as well. Matter in two derivative supergravity are in general minimally coupled, at least in the Einstein frame in string theory. However, when high derivative terms involve matter are non minimally coupled, uh, because in string theory, all possible coupling is uh, more or less allowed, except their specific coefficients may be uh, dictated by supersymmetries. Otherwise, uh, 
uh, all possible structure-wise arise. So the, the matters uh, are not minimum coupled when highly repeated. And we, this is, of course, I'm not entirely sure if it has to be true or not. We nevertheless expect that there may exist some kind of ghost free combination at some finite order by appropriate field redefinitions, the ones that we did before. But now the general field redefinition will include the uh, uh, form fields as well, such that uh, the end result is like a uh, love log graph. And uh, the natural field content of a bosonic set of low energy factors theory consists of metric and the various p forms. Of course, uh, the, the high order gravities in uh, string theory are, uh, I think the complete uh, picture is not quite known yet. So here we just consider some toy model. We consider high degree gravity with just one non minimally coupled p form. Uh, then the goal is to construct a high order theory whose field equation of motion is nevertheless set low, as in the case of Lava gravity. So now back to the Einstein gravity. Now we're going to maintain generalization of Einstein gravity. We're going to maintain the general coordinates, covariance, and invariance. And then the metric is still the fundamental field. Now, in addition, with a uh, P form. And the nonlinear high derivatives using polynomial. So we're going to construct theory uh, using high order total, nonlinear high order total derivative using polynomial invariants constructed from the Lima tensor and P form. So if the P form is not uh, involved, then this will give rise to low log value. And matter that's couples non linear. So in this picture, non minimally. In this picture, then we have one requirement that field equations remain second order uh, derivative analogous to lambda. So that's basically is a requirement, the, the main idea and requirement. So now let's look at uh, the law of gravity. We start with the oil integrand. So this is a kind of uh, oil integrand with a Riemann tensor uh, with a delta function. Uh, Cooked with uh, this way, it is this. So this is a particular combination of all uh, uh, Riemann tensor uh, polynomial invariants. It have a, a very good property. And uh, before we see the property, we first look at uh, low-line examples. When k equal to one, this is just one. So this would if if I have a Lagrangian, who uh, is given by the oil in the summation of oil in the with square root g, and this e zero will give you the cosmological constant, and this will give rise to the uh, einstein hubert action, and this will give you the cross momentum. And uh, gravity is very different. Uh, uh, from the matter, in a sense, for a typical matter field, if the matter field is tensor, its derivative can be easily made a tensor. But gravity, the fundamental field, is a symmetric tensor. Then a derivative of the metric tensor itself is not a, uh, a tensor. You have to have a two derivative to have a tensor. So that means the Riemann tensor have a two derivative. So a generic combination when you uh, uh, that is uh, the, uh, the Riemann tensor. You have to integrate by parts twice, and this have a uh, danger that uh, the theory become four derivatives because the uh, original Riemann tensor have two derivatives. If you have another Riemann tensor, also have a two derivative. Then you vary one of them, then integrate by parts and move the two derivative to the other side, then you get a four derivative theory. But uh, with this particular combination, then you find uh, the equation motion for this term just becomes the combination. Again, the Riemann tensor combination. Uh, uh, so the combination on the Riemann tensor. There's no derivative on it. So that means uh, 
the magic fields in this equation motion uh, only have two derivative angles. So that's uh, basically uh, the trick of this. And uh, so this is a striking property that no Riemann tensor factor acquires any derivative in the equation motion. And this, if you look at why this happened, this actually is a consequence that the violation of Riemann tensor gives rise to total derivative. And uh, well, why this would happen? Because then you can integrate, uh, you, you vary this term, you integrate by parts, then this would, uh, uh, the covariant derivative will hooked up on the other Riemann tensor with this kind of uh, anti uh, combination, then it precisely turned into uh, beyond the identity of the Riemann tensor that vanishes. So now we want to do the same thing when uh, an additional p form is involved. As a, for some clarity, we are not going to consider most general p form. For now, just consider the simplest case. Uh, well, not necessarily, and then trivial case, the Maxwell field. So a Maxwell field, uh, A is just one form, and uh, the field strength is the two form. And then now we are going to introduce a Z tensor, two up and two down, just mimicking the Riemann tensor. So it's a product of this uh, field strength. So it has kind of many properties uh, analogous to the Riemann tensor, for example, A, B, can, uh, a, B and C, D can swap. Oh, it's actually a, a good motivation to consider the subject, but by doing so, aren't you losing generality? I uh, suppose you want to study this problem generally, right? Well, I, yeah, generally, but uh, yeah. I here, at this moment, I use this example to demonstrate how you construct. Then I will give you more the more general okay. construction. Right. Right, right. <clears throat> so then uh, also these field strengths have uh, this kind of uh, Bianchi identity. So one can then uh, establish that these hands are set by the properties. And this property on the right hand side, you say in principle you have four derivatives. But Z itself, what? Well, each Z have a, F has a one derivative. Uh, but you have two derivatives acting on it. So in, uh, potentially you can have a three derivative. But if you look at the right hand side, then each field, this field will have only two derivatives and this have two derivatives. And this you have, have a Riemann tensor. So two of the uh, derivatives become a Riemann tensor. So, on the right hand side, the field and the involve two So although each term involve a total of four derivatives, both A mu and G mu nu have at most two derivatives acting directly, and this is a key, so this is very much like the uh, number of rise. So with this preliminary, then we can consider polynomial invariance of the tensor. Now in addition to the Lima tensor, we also construct uh, Z tensor put them together like this. So I have M Riemann tensor and N uh, Z tensor. So when this N equal to zero, the above gives rise to the OL integrands, and that is the low log graph. And then the Lagrangian for the general theory just sum of all the terms. And uh, we have the gamma M N are the copy constant. Uh, it's a bit tedious to verify, but it is fairly straightforward that all the field equations remain second uh, like uh, low log one. So now let's consider general p-form. So the construction, uh, now the p-form then, p-form field strength, you have a p-minus one uh, potential, so uh, what well, the field strength is given by this. So for the, uh, we'll also consider the Z tensor basically. F times F, sum is up and sum is down. Then that's uh, what you get. And then if one goes uh, the equation motion, you'll find that the theory only has two. So once you understand the P equal to two, then it's fairly straightforward. Generally. But it should be 
uh, common that uh, the bulk construction is not unique when p equal greater than equal to three, because uh, uh, for example, if I have a two form, uh, what? That's in the box over there on the table. Uh, right. Uh, I can, for example, for the two form, I actually can can have this kind of strategy. Uh, so I can construct a, a Z2 tab. tensor and hooks on uh, with the Lehman tensor. And that also works. But for this, uh, we can show that uh, is equivalent to the other possibility, other way of construction. The other way we construct is uh, A, D, C, D. This way of constructing and this way of construction turns out to be equivalent uh, by the uh, identity of it. But uh, if I have a four form, for example, I can do just this. And this will be different from this way of construction. And uh, then you can easily imagine that when you have more and more form, the P is bigger and bigger, then you have more and more possibilities of constructing different uh, uh, series. And uh, very quickly I find that I just don't find uh, it's become mind-boggling. You know, what, what kind of combination is equivalent to what is the independent phase? So there is a good way uh, some classification scheme can be done, but I didn't do it. So. So I just consider this a simplest case. But do we know anything about the string theory case? Uh, uh, no, I think... Uh, where there are higher forms, let's say, time to A. Right, right. You don't know how the effective action will look like. Yes, right. Oh, uh, in the end, you basically look at the Lehman hands, uh, mm -hmm. how the Lehman hands hooks with this field string. Because then you can use the field that you definition to get how the rich hands are. Is there not any clue from symmetry arguments how it should go? Uh, well, I mean, this is, at this moment, uh, you are really go to arbitrary orders. I think that's way beyond the uh, symmetry construction. Maybe if you ro look at the fourth order derivatives here, then you may have a certain clue. Uh, okay. In your construction, uh, are the coefficients in front of each element? The action arbitrary. At the moment, arbitrary right. This uh, just like even love log gravity, there are further restrictions nowadays. They seem to talking about the causality, so that presumably all this uh, restriction applies here when you uh, study 16. At this moment, all we wanted to just say the theory only are two right. So let's look at the one particular case, the simplest case example is on basic gravity P equal to 1. So when P equal to 1, the one form field strength is of an axial like scalar, so d chi equal to partial mu dx mu. Then a low line example of Einstein on basic gravity is this part of Einstein uh, gravity, and this is a uh, basic part. So this is have a four derivative total through the linearity. G mu mu is two derivative and this uh, uh, So the theory was constructed, uh, well, of course, Konesky constructed a whole class of a much general, and here just looking at the one low line example. Well, what's the capital G? Oh, the Einstein tensor. Yeah, this is the Einstein tensor. Okay. Right. And uh, this theory was recently discovered in cosmology by covalent high so called the high derivative Galilean. Gravity. So they, this paper is quite famous now with a lot of citation. And how related Galilean gravity with convex gravity uh, can be found in this review data. And uh, so we get into this subject uh, uh, with Heisen and Chris uh, by first looking at the uh, study the static black holes in convex gravity in this, in this theory. And that black hole actually was constructed uh, by some people in Chile and uh, a lot of other people as well. And uh, uh, 
I think uh, what they did with the first law, uh, the thermodynamics was not quite proper, so we uh, redo this uh, thermodynamic uh, of analysis. And we did have uh, two papers. And we find that actually not have uh, three surprises instead of two, not two, three, right? So first of all, the entropy formula, uh, we can say that's not valid. This is a well-known formula that seems to be never fails. You can always uh, find the entropy by the derivative of the action one. The Lagrangian, it's a Lagrangian, not a Lagrangian density, right? the Lagrangian by the derivative of the Riemann test. Uh, well, the well, this theory would have a, have a four derivative. Right. If without this term, then that's all the right. But how do you do corrections to the law formula that we already know? Right? Yeah, but uh, right. But if uh, you actually would find uh, if you look at uh, uh, the the word for the contribution to the wall entry formula due to this term for the black hole actually vanishes. So if uh, if uh, you think this formula is correct. Then for the static black hole, this just be one quarter of air level right? But that uh, uh, the answer is not quite right. Uh, the completion of the first law requires an introduction of a scalar charge on the horizon. And uh, it's very different from the usual scalar Halley black holes where the, the black hole, basically the scalar always vanishes on the horizon by uh, the equation of motion. But for monastic gravity, it doesn't vanish. And in particular, there is kind of global charge can be defined like this on the horizon. And uh, this does not vanish on the horizon, and the first law has to be modified by, uh, by this. And uh, another surprise is that the black hole quantum sticks relation is not valid. And uh, where the I is a Euclidean action. One thing can be definitely concrete to say is that this, if I say this is our solution to this problem, if you don't believe this solution anyway, then if you use thermodynamics, use this formula, just do the calculation. Because uh, for the scalar Halley black hole, you only have uh, only one parameter, the mass. So once you know the entropy, you know the temperature and the usual wake up, you can find the mass and the free energy, all of this. Or you can just do this calculation using your clean action. And these two answers not uh, contradict to each other. So what is a concrete statement is that this formula and this formula contradict to each other. And uh, so this means either this is wrong or this is wrong, or both wrong, but cannot be both correct. And then our belief is that both uh, incorrect. But this is the work. Uh, Which one? Incorrect. Both? Neither incorrect, right? So this is correct. But of course, this will be very strange now because. Uh, um, well, we because we base this to do NSFT, right? You do the, the, this uh, partition function. So a couple, I, couple of years ago, Sen was integrating fields outside of the black hole horizon out uh -huh. and getting corrections to the wall formula. Is, right. that in, is this sort of the same? I think the problem is different. Uh, How do you propose to change the wall formula? Well, we, well, what, what, what we did is just basically use the wall formula. We just go through the whole world formula again. Mm -hmm. And uh, we find in all two world formula eventually turns turn into a Stokes theorem. Basically, the, the surface integration become vanishes. Uh, right? And the one surface on the horizon and another surface on the center of infinity. The horizon integration gives you the TDS, and the, the infinity gives you kind of a, a variation of the mass. So then you got to, uh, so when we go through this whole world formula, then we find that in order to make sense of the 
first law, then we have this, basically this is a term that's causing a problem. Yeah, yeah, but my question is that integral from like self, do you have a modification of it? We don't have a covariant modification. Oh, okay. right. uh, so it would be interesting if there could be a covariant uh, modification. So I think uh, one does not expect a surprising classical gravity, so it's worth checking the papers out. I'm not going to talk more about it because uh, both high sign and crazy. So now uh, let's go on to look at the non minimum couple of the Maxwell theory. This is the T equal 2 theory I mentioned. So again, we are looking at, uh, going to study only the low line example because it's a simple thing. So the, the, we start with Einstein gravity plus the Maxwell theory, then plus this the H. Uh, not being decoupled the high derivatives. And this uh, looks very much like uh, the Gauss momentum, except uh, that so the R square term now become RF square. And this RAB, R upstairs AB in the Gauss momentum term become F, uh, a, F square AB. And this will be the upstairs lemma tensor now replaced by FAB. So, uh, then you go find the equation motion and all of that. Uh, and then we find some application of this theory. So uh, basically we look at for the black holes, charged black holes uh, in this theory. And uh, we find uh, the, that analytical solutions the following parameterizations. This uh, first is a purely magnetic uh, Solution where the electric charge is equal to zero. So, this purely magnetic solution can be solved completely. And then you can also find the, the exact purely electric solution, but uh, not a general solution with some special parameters. Uh, so, give rise to Z equal to uh, Lipschitz graph. Then, another possibility is that assume QE and QM is sufficiently small. Orders of the charges, or you assume the coupling constant is sufficiently small, then you get uh, uh, solutions to the linear order of the gamma. So, in terms of thermodynamics, in this case, uh, uh, black hole, uh, the water entropy formula does work because, uh, in this case, the field, the, the field strains or the vector potential vanishes on the horizon just like the RN black hole. So, but uh, QSR does not. Well, at least if you use the wall entropy formula to work, everything works. Then if you try to do the same thing with Q, the quantum statistics relation, then you find these two answers contradict to each other. So maybe this become a general feature of these series and hence possible for all string series. Because I think the only uh, thing special about this theory is that uh, it's non minimum coupled with a derivative coupling, and that must be true for all string theory in high orders. Then I think this uh, is rather disturbing because, uh, on one hand, you do use uh, QSR to study all sorts of things, like uh, LSFT is all based on QSR, the dictionary. So here, basically, I'm going to give an explicit example of a z uh, equal to Lipschitz black hole. So when the parameters, uh, the theory have a gamma and a lambda norm, and uh, these two parameters satisfy this condition, you got uh, uh, this uh, uh, black hole, which uh, because the GTT goes to like R to the fourth uh, instead of R squared. So Uh, Z equal to uh, Lipschitz black hole. And uh, let's see, usually if you use a Maxwell field to construct a Lipschitz black hole, it's impossible to do. Uh, the 
equation motion of the Maxwell equation, which has no source, will instantly rule out for a Maxwell field living uh, in the Lipschitz background. But here, you see the equation motion uh, is given by this. So the first part is just a Maxwell equation. Now you have a kind of a source. And this source basically provides the possibility of a construction. Lipschitz uh, Rankle. I think this is the only example in the literature where the theory only involves a metric and, uh, and uh, a maximum field, which enable you to construct a, a Lipschitz black hole with two parameters, length and charge, like uh, Rn. So we also consider uh, in the application of the uh, ADSFT, basically the viscosity the entropy ratio, and this uh, is given by that. But of course, it is a bit funny to talk about this because, on one hand, the QSR doesn't seem to work. On the other hand, this uh, viscosity is calculated based on this QSR. So it's a bit contradictionary. So this result uh, differs in the literature, namely, what is S, the entropy calculation. The viscosity calculation, we got the exact same result. And other, well, in the, in the literature, the result was calculated namely for small gamma because uh, it's assumed the gamma to be small and we have a solution for arbitrary gamma now. And uh, the eta is the same as before, but our entropy now is different from the other literature because they typically do it with QSR. OK, so finally, uh, a new subject which I'm going to concentrate a bit more, and, uh, basically look at the einstein back theory. So this is like a non-minimally coupled back to potential uh, coupled to gravity. So let us consider einstein Maxwell gravity and uh, so the same as uh, the Lagrangian. And now we add a non minimum coupled uh, coupling between the gravity and the vector. So we add a term like this g mu mu times a mu a. So where g mu mu is Einstein case and the gamma is some coupling constant. And the theory can be viewed as a gauging of the axial uh, global shifting signature of Honesky gravity. On the acid gravity, basically a mu is replaced by partial mu chi, and uh, a mu is partial mu chi. In this case, axion has a constant shifting symmetry, and if you want the shifting symmetry to be local, uh, and the series to be uh, invariant, then you have to introduce a gauge field, and then these gauge fields can give this to become a massive. And this gauging can be done to any p-form strength to become a p-form potential of the theory I talked about earlier. Then we see immediately that your one gauge symmetry is broken because of this. So now the question is whether this term can be easily invalidate by experiment or observation. Because uh, uh, your one gauge symmetry of photon is uh, very robust, any can kind of uh, term you add into violating term add into it, we would be imagined to uh, not kosher. But turns out that this term actually seems to be rather harmless. Because first let's say experiment test going to the fact that gravity is extremely weak because uh, well here you really need to add like G divided by C to the force. Uh, so compared to the other forces, we typically ignore gravity in an elemental particle physics in our current experiment scale. So this term is unlikely to have any testable effect on the LHC physics. So now the question is observational test. Is the light still light? So in Minkowski vacuum or some more general backgrounds, such as short shield or curved black holes, give you a simple vanish. So the linear fluctuation of the CL in this background consists only then the mass described on the photon. And hence, uh, your gauge symmetry 
emerges. Uh, so we do see that light still uh, acts like light at the linear level. So that is an interesting point. But of course, you may argue that uh, the GMU is not zero in our universe. And this time can still uh, destroy the light. So in our current universe, the contribution to the space-time curvature due to electromagnetic field are negligible, and hence it can be viewed in the background with vanishing aim. In the matter energy momentum tensor, in uh, the matter energy momentum tensor in the Einstein equation is simply viewed by that. But this should be really understood with a C, uh, you know, G over C to the fourth, so it's a highly suppressed term. Uh, has mainly three sources. One is a barium or lepton kind of a matter. And those matter typically localized. So if you have a black hole, then the light doesn't really care because you will be here uh, outside the black hole. But uh, for what happens to the kind of distribute the matter, like the paper or, or like dust, then the direct interaction of this matter with the light is far greater than this term. So for this matter, this contribution can be involved. Then there's another possibility is dark energy. And this can give rise a global mass to A, although not necessary, you can add other terms to cancel it. And this is extremely small anyway, because current solar remains uh, effective on range. You want to consider this. Dark matter, or the dark energy. And the dark matter is the only possibility that can give rise to nature contribution. We can give a Lorentz violating and a gauge symmetry breaking. And it might be, I should not say, should be, and it might be observable because uh, the light does not interact with the uh, uh, dark matter directly. Then, if you light travel in the dark matter background, uh, Sufficient long distance, then this term can uh, take into effect. But uh, still, at the like uh, at the scale of the solar system, then you don't expect to see any effects on the light. So I think uh, unless you look at uh, kind of a galaxy orders, the light still acts like light. So you we can add this term to the theory. And, uh, and then you have this you know, one gauge symmetry violation, but nevertheless, it's hardly detectable. What about the third? So now, now your photon will have three physical states. Right. Well, okay. So uh, what I'm doing here is uh, at a uh, uh, linear order with uh, classical level. So what's this effect at the quantum level? I know. Sure, I'm not sure because this uh, whether I have to deal with uh, because Jimmy Mu or whether I have to deal with quantum gravity as well. You know. uh, Maybe you can do QFT on the curve. Right. Uh, basically, I hope I can rely on the fact that there's no discontinuity for the uh, photon, unlike this massive gravity. Between mass and the masses, right? All the, because all these effects are very small. So I don't have really the answer to that. So at the moment, you just look at the, the classical level. So now let's look at, we focus on the simpler theory where the curvature appears linearly and the A appears bilinear. So this, of course, belongs to the general uh, class of the series I constructed earlier. It's just a low-line example. Uh, so I add a cosmology constant. Uh, then the vacuum, basically, where A goes to zero. So the G mu mu uh, equal to lambda. So, so they give rise to ADS. And uh, the vacuum near the fluctuation, the vacuum linear fluctuation then consists a massless graviton and a Broca field with a mass, which become Maxwell in this effective mass uh, in here. 
So of course, if you end this term and it has no effect, then what's the point, basically? But we do want to have uh, some uh, effect because at the early universe where the curvature is uh, strong, then we'll say, ah, this now uh, become a, uh, have a strong effect. And uh, in particular, this would imply that I can use this vector field to do cosmology. You cannot do cosmology and then maintain the cosmic principles like homogeneity and uh, isotropicity if it's a Maxwell field. But uh, now the gauge symmetry is broken, so I can use that to do cosmology. And this actually turns out to be done by uh, earlier work, uh, someone else. Well, they are more like cosmologists, so I'm not quite sure what they do. What we did is find some kind of exact solutions uh, of this background, and we find some deceit bounds. So you have this uh, FLRW uh, metric, and uh, we find a solution that is like coach mu, a coach to certain power. So that the t goes to infinity or minus infinity, like the theta becomes exponential, and uh, it has a minimum size when t goes to zero. So uh, this uh, turns out to be a yeah, solution um, in the And uh, well, this, uh, but also I would like uh, to have, say, at the end of the universe, or what, end of the uh, kind of, uh, what's that, expansion, uh, kind of inflation. You, I want the phi go to zero so that you one symmetry become uh, 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 emerged. So that actually can, uh, is possible to do it. For example, this solution. Uh, when t goes to infinity, this becomes a theta. So it's like inflation. Uh, but when t goes to infinity, this term drops out. So it starts from a theory where the, uh, the background, where the gauge symmetry clearly is uh, violate. But uh, as t goes to infinity, then it's become a, a vacuum. Where a goes to zero, then at, at later time t, if you do a linear perturbation at later time t, then this becomes a, a, the spectrum only involves a photon and a massive square. This is exactly what we did earlier. In, uh, so the inflation basically, you, you start with a theory that with no U1 gauge symmetry, after this inflation with this kind of theta bounce type of inflation, then U1 gauge symmetry can emerge. So this kind of very economical uh, uh, stuff. So I'm not, uh, now I have a bit of time, so uh, let's also study this. Uh, we also look at the static solution in this theory. Uh, we found a black holes, uh, some new black hole with uh, very strange fall off in the square root fall off. So, uh, and then we also, in this theory, find uh, uh, large classes of wormhole. Basically, what well, we intend to find a black hole, but the solution turns out to be wormhole. So what happens is that in this theory, we can consider the most general kind of uh, static and spherical symmetric index, where A cap is it's a bit like Rn black hole, but not quite, because it's, it's not the one H. And then we find that this solution, and uh, the F quantity is just like an eddy, like a Schwarzschild black hole kind of object with a cosmological constant or without a cosmological constant. Then, so you have a F, you have a, a, a zero at a certain R norm. But when F goes to zero, you find that H is not zero. So you have a solution like this, asymptotic areas of flat, and this F have a zero point, at which point that H not zero, but some positive constant, 
and this describes a wormhole. So this wormhole applies to asymptotic areas or flat. So the way we did that, uh, find this solution is, is called the superpotential method. Basically, we consider this uh, spherical symmetrical index in this form. Then this is kind of coordinate transformation to map this index to this map. And then we find construct effective reduced one dimension Lagrangian, which can be write on a t minus v, where the t can be viewed as the one dimension Sigma model of uh, three variables, phi, a, and b, and the b is potential. So if we, so the t can be right on in the nonlinear sigma model. So if we can construct a b, the b if can be constructed in terms this way, method this way, where w is called the super potential, then the system can be reduced to first order system. So this is very much like a Symmetry and, uh, and indeed for this uh, potential we find a super potential as well with an arbitrary point M there. So this is called kind of some kind of fake uh, super, uh, super symmetry. And then you get a first order equation, and then those first order equations are much easier to solve than second order equation, and you got this solution. And the way hoping to get a black hole, but it's not clear. Uh, typically, I mean, uh, about stability, because the wormhole typically involved in that. I have a problem about, uh, in the Einstein gravity, wormhole have a problem of energy momentum tensor. The matter energy momentum tensor typically violates some kind of energy additions. So you may think uh, maybe similar problems here. But this is not Einstein gravity, you have additional uh, natural coupling. So what is matter and what is not matter? Not you could complain about that with the bounce too, right? Yes, and right. Bounce, that bounce should not be possible either. So uh, that's right. fixed, maybe this is fixed, right? Yes, right. So the issue is whether you have all kind of ghosts or instability. Right. We were hoping that uh, it comes from like supersymmetry, the first order form, then maybe uh, it's better. But uh, to analyze the instability of this kind of system, we want to do it. Does the instability sometimes, or the ghost structure, sometimes check by undoing this uh, super work that you just did, right? Uh -huh. So you put that chi field back in, and then you look at the fate of chi. I don't see. you already know that that chi is OK? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, because this kind of construction, I feel it should be OK. Right. Because this uh, is really uh, using the Stoker symmetry, basically, that theory. Yeah. So, uh, so then uh, you also have Lipschitz uh, black holes, as you can talk about them tomorrow in the well, All sorts of kind of Lipschitz black holes. Then, of course, once you have a uh, decent bounce, then you can also you clean you know, double rotation, what's that, weak rotation to turn into a uh, Rondo syndrome domain walls. And uh, now this A become a coach inverse of, uh, so that uh, R goes to infinity or minus infinity, both ends, it looks like uh, two anti deceit uh, boundary, uh, no, 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 not boundary, the anti deceit uh, horizons, then you have a boundary to it uh, when R equal to zero. So this is uh, uh, on the syndrome domain wall, and the question is, in this field, is gravity can be localized? There are some subtleties, but I think uh, we can show that, uh, well, there's some arguments that this system does localize uh, gravity, but we, it's very difficult to find out how the gravity will be modified, because uh, uh, the linear perturbation is impossible to solve. So, okay, so this is basically is my talk, and uh, uh, low law of gravities can be generalized to including the G 
generic and then minimum coupled P form. And the construction provides toy models of high reality effective stereo streaming testing. And stereo contain rich structure in the solution space. And we find almost all kind of uh, possible solutions we we'll talk about can construct in this series. And uh, there's an unusual black hole thermodynamic uh, arises. Uh, the world formism works, but world entropy formula may not. And also QSR does it work. So uh, quantum sticks relation. And that is seem to be more disturbing. I don't have any answer to that. One thing that is definitely concrete is that you may say uh, QSR, by definition, we just insist on having this QSR, because that's what you need to do uh, uh, partition functions. Uh, uh, if you do that, uh, then this, uh, you have to give up uh, what the uh, form, uh, uh, formula, basically, which classically is just uh, a state simple mathematical uh, form, uh, theorem that is a Stokes theorem. Right? So, uh, another thing about the quantum state theory relation, uh, if you still insist on quantum state theory relation, is that uh, if you use that to say, for example, in four dimensions, uh, the massless graviton has a fall off like one over half. And so the Schwarzschild black hole basically simply give by this. And then typically in the world form, you read off the mass of a black hole, basically looking at the mass with square form. So this coefficient will give rise to the, the mass. So in, in, a, in a way such that uh, you only need to look at the asymptotic uh, structure. Whether this is a black hole, whether it has a horizon, that really matters. Uh, asymptotic behavior of the metric, then you can more or less say what's the mass. The only subtlety is that maybe the coefficient has to be carefully determined. Now, you horizon, right? hmm? need a horizon. Well, um, the an object, a uh, massive object, doesn't have to have a horizon. That's true, but otherwise, what's the boundary condition? You're going to integrate from the horizon to infinity. Well, that's the word formalism, yes. But I'm saying that you can talk about the mass even, oh. or the, you know, if you can consider a singular object with a certain mass. A wormhole, for example, have, can also have a mass. You just basically read off this. Uh, that is typical. That's in a sense that uh, how do we find out the mass of the sun? We can just let uh, the Earth's orbiting it. We look at asymptotic behavior, not. Uh, the details of sun is not important. At least this is a typical story. Now, if you are going to use QSR method to do calculation, uh, then you find the mass will be a very mass. Of course, if you have one prime, the whole solution only involves one parameter. Eventually, it must be a function of this view. But it's become a very convoluted function. It involves the inverse function of the hybrid geometry function dependence of this mu. And uh, if we want to be happy with that, then you still can insist on that uh, uh, QSR still work. Uh, but uh, that is the price you have to pay now uh, in those series. So that, uh, I think, uh, is very strange because uh, uh, what's uh, our, you know, uh, uh, the new result, in addition to the homeless gravity, is that this seem to be generically uh, invalid. Then one starts the question, uh, this is a generic kind of structure we have in string theory. So, uh, and I find this uh, rather disturbing. But finally, we construct a huge theory, basically, with a uh, uh, high degree of gravity, with uh, a uh, well, we only have one p form, but still, arbitrary perspective and uh, arbitrary p form. And uh, what I have uh, presented is just uh, some uh, small low-lying examples. So there's a 
still not a problem. It probably is worth discussing. Okay, well, thank you very much. Questions? Quantum statistical population. Fine. Uh, can you go back to where it's the mark? Okay. Right. So this is like the action. Okay. And uh, so. In, I think uh, if you calculate uh, these uh, partition functions, you integrate the whole uh, Euclidean action, right? Then including, for static solution, you integrate out the space part, and you also integrate a time part. The time part, then uh, uh, it's a periodic time, then it's related to this uh, uh, T, the temperature. And that, uh, uh, would give rise to the free energy of the system. That's a, then you compare this system with the thermodynamics. And this this gets the second law, right? Yes, right. And you're saying the second law is fine, but this isn't, or neither of them are fine? Well, uh, in black hole, the T you can always calculate, say, in the standard. Well, depends on what your kind of ensemble is, right? But right. yeah, usually you pick it so T is constant. And then the variation give the second ball. From, from this yes, right. But I'm trying to understand. It sounds like you're saying that you can either fix the entropy formula and still have the second ball, but then you cannot get this relation. Or well, it depends because we don't know. Well, say, uh, in this kind of mass gravity, there is a couple of issues. We don't have a kind of independent calculation for mass. Or uh, well, okay. Let me try to think about uh, what is uh, so the free energy is equal to m minus t s, right? So uh, what's that? Uh, s would be minus. Uh, is that how you do? Right. So if you work out the free energy, basically just this uh, Euclidean action time this t. Then the temperature is assumed to be known. Then the entropy can be calculated. You can do calculation on entropy this method, or you can calculate the entropy using word formalism, the word entropy formula. And you find these two methods that is inconsistent with each other. You get a different uh, entropy. That is a, when we say it's a mathematical statement. So with this statement, all one can conclude is that the kind of both cannot be right. But uh, uh, when you take that derivative with respect to temperature, uh, do, do you have to like hold fixed these charges on that? Well, for the simpler case, you say the C, yeah, you, you need a fixed, uh, but then I can always consider the simplest case first, they, that's the charge to zero. Uh -huh. Then the CL only involves one parameter. Uh -huh. So, uh, then this is kind of unambiguous when you say there's still a contradiction. Yes, right. Well, what about these formulas? These, well, then the corrections to the entropy formula and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, there, are, there are known terms that you have to add to this thing in general, right? Right, right. Well, I, I think they are considered some kind of quantum effect or oh. any SEFT effect, or you know. I think they calculate uh, quantum effects uh, and they do it in ADS uh, CFD part. So you got some additional thing. But here we're not doing that. Well, okay, right. but if you integrate out massive fields, that's, uh -huh. doesn't that look the same as if I just give you a higher degree of reduction? Uh, Shouldn't you use that? Well, I mean, uh, what, I, what we have here is just to say, this is our classical right? You just uh, uh, do everything classically. Any more questions? All right, let's say call again.
you mean by genetic deformity? Uh, uh, just means any deform. I, I scrub that. Uh, okay. so P not restrict to the one or two. Uh, three, four, but we didn't do any further analysis. In the one case, it's a, 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 a scale of the shift symmetry, and you shifted its field strength. Right. So of course, keep doing that. Are your other ones? Other ones can all be done. So I can replace all the Fs by A, basically. That can be all done. Uh, but the, you, you have a price to pay whenever you do that, then the gain symmetry is lost, the, the local gain symmetry. You can do what? I thought the Stuckelberg shift is precisely gauging that local gain symmetry. Right, then you... You, uh, you drop the, the other field. Then. Well, you, you... Well, just like... Uh, your chi goes to chi plus constant, right? That, uh, so it's invariant. Uh, uh, if C is a constant, then, uh, but C, if it's dependent on, uh, uh, then you have to go to plus uh, A, basically. Mm -hmm. Then uh, a shifting on chi can be become a gauge image on A. Uh, so then your theory, uh, Right, but this would also imply now I can define this as a, a mutator, which like uh, this is like a Maxwell field. Maxwell field. It has a new one gain symmetry, but it eats this one to become a more like a local yeah. type. Yes, and I expect this to work because uh, what would normally become the strongly coupled ghost mode in A tilde is uh -huh. actually being parameterized by chi. And yes, you started right. with a theory that has this nice property that chi is not higher derivative. Right. So say you could do this again with the higher forms where you, you put a gauge one form, right. gauge, you know, with a gauge symmetry, mm -hmm. and then you shift it by exactly this way with a two form. Right. And if you do if you're doing that everywhere, then you again expect that to work. Right. Be, uh, well I mean kind of a yeah, in terms of uh, what they call the ghost associated with two derivatives will be no, there will be no, uh, right. but uh, you can have kind of more subtle ghosts uh, right? Uh, yeah, right. I mean, even in Einstein gravity.